Welcome to the Fog Shrouded Realm of Dead by Daylight, where the line between life and death blurs, and the pursuit of survival is both relentless and thrilling. In How to Survive a Dead by Daylight Beginner's Handbook, we embark on a journey into the heart-pounding world of this asymmetric horror game. Whether you're a newcomer nervously stepping into the fog for the first time, or a fledgling survivor seeking to hone your skills, this guide is your essential companion. Join us as we navigate the ominous trials, unravel the mysteries of the entity, and equip you with the knowledge to outwit, outrun, and outlast the relentless killers. Are you ready to face the terror and emerge victorious? Or will you succumb to the darkness? Your survival starts here. Today, I want to talk about survival and how best to be able to survive the trials in Dead by Daylight. Which goes along with the basics of doing the gens, surviving the killer, and powering the exit game. I want to first talk about flashlights. Which come in, I believe it's three, yeah, three, three different rarities. You've got the Uncommon Flashlight, which only has eight uses. We have the Rare Sports Flashlight, that has eight uses, decreases or decreases battery life consumption by 11%, so it lasts longer, and increases the accuracy of the flashlight's beam by 20%. And then we have the very rare Purple Utility Flashlight, which has 12 uses, increases the brightness of the flashlight beam by 30%, increases blindness duration by 15%, and decreases the accuracy of the flashlight beam by 20%. These flashlights, it doesn't matter which one you use, will all have the same add-ons for them. So you've got the odd bulb, which is the ultra rare flashlight add-on, which increases the brightness of the beam by 50%, increases blindness, increases battery consumption, so it's more of a risk and reward sort of thing. We have the high-end high, high -end sapphire lens, which also does, I believe, the exact same stuff as the focus lens and wide lens, but as the rarity goes up, you gain an extra thing from it. But with the sapphire le lenses, you get increased the range of the flashlight beam by 25%, so that's how far away you can be from the killer and it's still actually blind the killer. Increase the width of the flashlight beam by 25%, which technically means you don't have to be so accurate with the flashlight. You can be within a certain, like, I want to say it's like a cone for the flashlight. And then you have increased the brightness of the flashlight beam by 30%, which I want to say feeds into the bottom one, which is increased blindness duration by 15%, which is a good thing you have there. You then have the hal the intense halogen, so that goes along with stuff like the odd bulb, power bulb, and low amp filament, I believe it goes along with, which increases blindness and also increases the brightness of the beam by 40%. We then have batteries, which increase the amount of seconds your flashlight lasts for, so the which goes as high as rare flashlight add-ons, I believe. I don't think we get a ultra, a very rare battery, but the long life battery is six seconds, which then drops down to four, which then drops down to two seconds, and. I believe it's only in the lower rarities, but you do have the rubber grip increasing accuracy, which technically goes along with some of them. I don't know how if you want to be using the sapphire the sapphire one with it because of the spread, but then the, I guess the spread kind of fills up with the uh, accuracy, making it a better flashlight. 
And then you also have the 20% lever grip. Some of these event items will pop up as well. So like with the one of the event flashlights we had, we had a broken bulb which causes the flashlight to flicker, increases the brightness of the flashlight beam by 15%, increases blindness, and increases the spookiness just a little. There was also a Halloween one. I don't think I have any left. But it, the flashlight beam, if you held it against a wall, would have a little ghosty on it. It's quite cool. Another thing I want to talk about with um, survival is looping the killer. And what I mean by looping is being able to run around obstacles and buildings and that sort of stuff and keeping the killer at bay for as long as possible. I will do a full length video more in detail on looping soon within the series and tell you some perks that will help you loop and also uh, make looping easier for you for beginners. Perks I want to talk about with for survival, we've got stuff like resurgence here, which um, when you're unhooked, or yeah, when being unhooked or unhooking yourself, so having that 4% chance to jump off hook, or the killer's camping bar filling up, you will get 50% of your healing progression back. So that basically corresponds to people healing you or using the perk's self-care, which is frowned upon, but I will give you reasons why that'll be good, a good perk to use at some point. But yes, Resurgence gives you 50% healing progression, meaning anyone who comes up to heal you only has to heal you for 50% of your normal healing progression. Another perk I would I definitely say is good for survival. I think I also mentioned it in the first um, part, in the big basics and that sort of stuff, when I mentioned about leveling Meg and playing Meg first. I'd say um, a basic no DLC play for the game is Adrenaline, which basically, as soon as the last generator is powered, you gain one health state. So if you're down, you go to being injured. If you're injured, you go to being fully healed. And it also gives you a sprint boost allow for five seconds. Yeah, five seconds, it says, when it's very, very rare to tier three. It gives you that a little bit of sprint boost to be able to get to like exit gates, get away from killers, pretty much just to get around the map is the way I use I use it some of the time. But the downside to this, you do get exhaustion for 40 seconds after this perk is rocked. So stuff like dead hard and other perks that require you not to be exhausted will not proc during those 40 seconds. Another perk I do love that I use all the time in my main survivor build and I don't think since I've unlocked it it's gone out of my survivor build is off the record which means when you get unhooked it activates for 80 seconds as it clearly says the aura of your aura will not be shown to killer so if they use barbecue or any aura reading perk they won't be able to see you for those 80 seconds. Your grunts of pain are reduced to zero, so no grunts of pain at all, and you gain endurance. Like, when you hop up, get taken off the hook to begin with, you gain a short amount of endurance, but for those 80 seconds, you have endurance until hit by the killer, or you do any conspicuous actions, like opening chests, I believe, counts, Doing gens counts, healing people counts towards that. So you have all those that correspond to being conspicuous, which will take away that exhaustion, not exhaustion, endurance for the, after that 80 seconds. But it doesn't matter too much on how long that endurance lasts for if you're far from the killer, I guess. And a perk I absolutely love to have in my build, no matter what, is distortion which basically you start the match with three tokens and if the killer has let's say lethal pursuer which reveals the aura of all survivors at the very start of the trial you are not shown to him but 
it does take away one of those stacks, basically telling you that the killer has the um, lethal pursuer or anything like that. Any perks like barbecue or um, there's a dredge perk where you look in lockers that reveals survivors. I can't think what the perk is off the top of my head right now, but that reveals your aura. Any perks that do those sorts of things, basically any perk, as it does say, that reveals your aura to the killer you will not be shown but it does consume a stack of or a token of distortion which is then gained back by being in the killer's radius and by radius i mean terror radius so when you get a little heartbeat and also one thing i do want to point out in the settings i believe it's in accessibility yes one thing i do want to put out there and it's the best thing they've added into the game, I'd say, is the heartbeat visual support. Basically meaning, when the killer is near you, instead of just hearing that heartbeat, heartbeat that goes ba-dum, 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 and like that, you actually get a visual of the heart where your survivor's heart technically would be. And it basically helps you to, let's say, if you're not really li listening to the game, or you're playing with a friend who's talking, you still actually get the visual and you get to see if the killer is nearby. And since they've put that in, I've not turned that off. It's one of those must have sort of things, I'd say. Another perk I would say can help you with your survival is the Feng Min perk being alert. Oh, I've also forgot to say that you got Adrenaline, which is from Meg. Distortions from Jeff. Zarina is off the record. And Jill Valentine is Resurgence. And as I was saying, Feng Min has a perk called Alert, which basically means if the killer breaks a wall, breaks a pallet that's been dropped, for five seconds, their aura is revealed to you. So you can see how far away they are. You can keep an eye on them. And all that sort of stuff. You can also tell as well if a pallet is broken. If you can correspond to your mind where that area of the map is. You can work out where not to run when looping the killer. Another perk I would definitely say to use at some point. It kind of annoys killers. It kind of annoys killers like me at least. Because I am a, a killer main normally. But I do dabble in Survivor. You have boil over which decreases the range at which um killers see the aura of hooks increases your wiggle strength by 33 percent and anytime you struggle why they are um you're on their shoulders it also makes that a lot harder for killers so basically when you wiggle it kind of sways the killer a bit Without boil over, it's reasonably hard to easy can easy to control, not hard to control. Easy to control with boil over, it makes that a little bit harder. And if you can manage to cause them to j fall off heights, like there's a hole in the RPD library, if you can manage to make them fall through that, fall off anything. So like being from a height, like if you're on the hook on the mountain or like a hill top sort of area, and you make them wiggle off that. That gives you 33% of the wiggle bar, which can be make or break the getting off their shoulder. I think another good perk that is good to have is Leon Kennedy's Bite the Bullet, which when healing a survivor, they make no noise. So their grunts of pain are completely suppressed for that entire time of you healing them. So that is another good perk I could I would say to go with. Uh, whatever perks are there that are stuff like botany knowledge while you're healing um, survivors. This is a Claudette perk, so base game survivor perk. Her healing speed is increased by 50% and healing item efficiency is reduced by 20% basically increasing healing massively 
and a perk that I only discovered the other week when some survivors were using it against me in a match. You have the Jeff Hansen perk Breakdown, which any survivor or any killer that is near a hooked survivor, I believe. Yeah, anytime, oh, anytime you are removed from the hook, it it breaks for 100 and uh, yeah, 180 seconds to so three minutes. And you also see the um, killer's aura for six seconds. Which, if you end up doing a gem that's right next to a hook, it will then cause that killer, if they down you near that hook that you've already been hooked on before by using this perk, that hook's out of action. They then have to try and take you to another hook, basically increasing your chance of wiggling off their shoulders. You then also have whatever ones. You've got Dead Hard, which is an exhaust another exhaustion perk like Adrenaline. So if Adrenaline procs, you wouldn't be able to use Dead Hard for that amount of time. And also, if I believe it works the same way. If you use Dead Hard just before the final gen procs, Adrenaline doesn't take action, I don't think. I want to say. So you have that, which basically the way Adrenaline, not Adrenaline, Dead Hard works is that if you are hit by the killer and you manage to hit the activate ability button, I don't know what it is on console, but on PC, I think it's F, unless anyone's changed it, I think. I think I might have changed it. It might be E or F. It's one of those two. But if you manage to hit that just before the killer hits you, you actually take a extra hit and also gets sent into deep wounds, which actually, if I jump forward a moment to Made For This, I want to say that Dead Hard and Made For This might be a, a pair that work well together, because if you use your Dead Hard and the killer hits you, you go into deep wounds. And with Made For This, after you finish healing, another survivor gain Endurance status for 10 seconds, while affected by deep wounds, you also run 3% faster. Which, I think the first part of Made For This, the healing part, corresponds no matter what, but that 3% run speed when in deep wounds can actually be a make, for, make or break sort of thing. I don't see many killers complain before they change this, that people were using made for this and it was broken or anything like that but made for this that three percent extra run speed can help you in a make or break situation and i did want to come back to decisive strike is another perk that can help you with surviving if you have unhooked or unhooked yourself 60 seconds you have 60 seconds of time where if you are downed by the killer and they pick you up, you can instantly stab your aggressor and cause them to be stunned for the moment and also get off their shoulder. You then get that chance to run in those three seconds where they are stunned, which can work very well. I do also want to point out if I miss any perks that can help with survival, feel free to drop those down below. Another perk that I know a streamer I watch, he is a big fan of this, and if he does see this, he will know who I'm talking about. We have Diversion, or the nickname Pebble. Basically, if you're in the killer's terror radius for a certain amount of time, you will then be able to activate Diversion. Basically, if you are hiding and the killer comes near you, you can throw a pebble, which will then cause a, it's like a, I want to say it's a rush action. So you could throw it at a gen, you could throw it at a vault location, and it will hopefully cause a diversion and a distraction for the killer so that they won't realize where you are Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's very situational, I'd say. But that's that. We then have... That's one perk I definitely do want to mention. And people will probably be annoyed if I didn't mention it. And it is right at the very end. You have Unbreakable. 
which is a perk you gain by prestiging William William Bill Overbeck, the person that was brought in from Valve's game Left 4 Dead. He was in the very first Left 4 Dead, but basically unbreakable. You can use it once per trial, and I think the best time to use it is when you're on death hook. Or no, any time you feel the need to actually use it. So if the killer's slugging, basically leaving survivors on the ground, not hooking them, you can completely fill your recovery bar. And this perk also increases your time, to, your speed of recovery by 35% when it's fully very rare maxed. So basically how it works is you can basically get yourself up from the recovery position. So when you fill that bar completely, instead of it getting to the end and you're like, you now need help to heal yourself, it fills up completely, allowing you to go from the down state to the injured state completely. And that is some of the picks I've chosen. There are other ways in order to survive, like using your environment, like vaulting things, um, pallets, pallet stunning the, the killer, and potentially if they decide to break it instantly, you could flashlight blind them and be able to get out of their, out of their way quickly, hopefully. I do also want to point out, I do stream over on Twitch Monday, Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Fridays. Fridays I do variety games, but Monday to Wednesday is always Dead by Daylight, depending. Sometimes there is Thursday streams if I can't manage the Tuesday stream. But for those that have enjoyed this video and also a look at some of the perks of survival, the looks of flashlights, I may try and get some clips in it as I try and edit this through. But if you have enjoyed, don't forget to drop a like down below. If this video has helped you work out some perks for your builds and that sort of stuff that can prolong your survival, don't forget to drop a comment down below if I've missed any perks that might also help because these videos aren't just for me to help you guys, they're for the community to help everyone, basically. And also, don't forget to subscribe for when I do more of this series because I think the next video I might to have a look at looping i might have a look at some other things that can help with surviving in dead by daylight we might have a bit more of a deeper look into the blood web and what you can actually get out of the blood web but for now i thank you for watching and we'll see everyone next time